Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy T for 365 Horror, and this is a horror movie discovery channel. I am just here to put as many horror movies on your watch list as possible. And in today's video, we are going to be looking at 10 brand new releases for you guys to watch and stream today. So let's get into it right now. Now we are going to get right into the video, but before we do, I've got to remind you guys to please like and subscribe if you like this content. Now this video is best watched with a movie tracker. I like to use Letterboxd. It's just the easiest way to keep track of the movies that you've seen and want to see. And lastly, this is just a preview. These are not recommendations. If you do want to see some recommendations, I suggest you watch my Every Movie I Watched in a Month series or my You Should Watch series. But with that, let's get right into some new movies. The first movie we're going to look at this week is a horror thriller called Abigail, and it's available on VOD Digital. <laughs> After a group of criminals kidnap the ballerina daughter of a powerful underworld figure, they retreat to an isolated mansion, unaware that they're locked inside with no normal little girl. It is directed by Matt Bedinelli Olfen and Tyler Gillette. Okay, after watching the trailer for Abigail, I do have to give you guys a full caveat that I have seen this movie before. Looking back on the trailer, the movie does look good and I did find that the trailer does do it justice. I did find the movie was well acted and decently bloody. Now this isn't a spoiler because it's clear from the trailers and advertisements, but I really wish that we got to go into this movie not knowing exactly what Abigail's origin was. Maybe once they got through production, they found that it was integral to their promotion to kind of show her origin as a vampire, but I really wish we would have figured it out when the characters did. I really do feel like that could have just been built into a great little twist. Watch for my full review of Abigail in this month's monthly watch list video. At the end of the day, Abigail was a decent movie and deserves a spot on your watch list. Next movie we're going to take a look at is a comedy horror mystery called Founders Day, and it's available on VOD Digital. A small town is shaken by a series of ominous killings in the days leading up to a heated mayoral election. It is directed by Eric Bloomquist. Okay, after watching the trailer for Founders Day, this movie looks like it could be a competent little slasher. Now, the acting and everything looked fine in the movie, but everything just looked a little run-of-the-mill to me. Now, I'd still watch this movie because a slasher like this to me is kind of about mystery sometimes, and it's also about brutality, gore, and variety of kills. So this movie still has a chance to deliver. Why it's kind of missing some of the hype for me is because when you looked at a movie like Thanksgiving, we really just got hyped up from the trailer. Like, you got to see some disturbing stuff, like the spread of dead people and how he was, like, basting a victim. It just really got you hyped up for how brutal the movie was going to be. Now, at least in the trailer of this one, I did see a couple of really brutal stabbings, so we're just going to have to see how this one turns out. I think it's going to be decent as long as there's no off-screen kills, so I'm going to put it in my watch list. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a... <laughs> Next, we're going to take a look at a horror mystery thriller called Campton Manor, and it's available on VOD Digital. When you're only on the first page. An author tries to investigate a decades-old mystery and finds himself stuck in his own ghost story. It is directed by Kat Hostick. Okay, after watching the trailer for Campton Manor, this looks like an okay thriller horror. The acting looked mid-tier, but it wasn't too bad. Now, I do like the premise, A Man Who Could See the Dead, and it looks like it kind of follows the usual vein of him trying to solve dead people's problems or bring someone to justice, so in that regard, I don't mind the story. I thought that the effects and the makeup on the dead looked alright, and I just liked what they were kind of showing us the dead were doing. It was good and disturbing. It's not exactly a priority, but I'm going to be putting Campton Manor on my watch list. Ever get the feeling that you're going mad? Madness is a gift. Don't mistake it for anything else, but There's darkness everywhere, Teddy. It's whether you engage it or not. Next, we're going to take a look at a straight horror called Silence of the Prey, and it's available on VOD Digital. Like 
In a desperate bid to secure a future for her child, an undocumented immigrant mother takes a caretaker job. Unbeknownst to her, the elderly man conceals a horrifying truth. It is directed by Karina Kudzina and Michael Weinberg. Okay, after watching the trailer for this one, it does look like another mid-tier kind of horror film. Now, the acting didn't look horrible, but it did look like it had kind of a run-of-the-mill premise. Now, what saves this movie is it does look like we get some bloody gore, and I did see some kind of painful torture in there. Now, this is kind of good, because if I am going to watch, like, occulty or Satanism-type films, it does have to be brutal, because I do find that they usually lack on the creeps and scares. Again, this looks like a good mid-tier film for my watch list. Like, uh, like a Thanksgiving. Something like that. Next movie we're going to take a look at is a horror sci-fi thriller by the name of Sting, and it's available on VOD Digital. Sting. After raising an unnervingly talented spider in secret, 12-year-old Charlotte must face the facts about her pet and fight for her family's survival when the once charming creature rapidly transforms into a giant, flesh-eating monster. It is directed by Kaya Roche-Turner. Okay, so this is another one where I've got to give a full caveat. I have seen Sting, and it's an okay spider movie. You get a lot of what it is from the trailer, so if you do like that kind of creepy crawly stuff, then this one is worth a watch. I want to give a slight warning about this one because when you first kind of throw it on, it kind of struck me as a kiddie movie, but then as the movie progresses, you do get some pretty good gore that definitely matures it up. I will have my full review of this movie in my monthly watch list, but this one is all right and worth a watch. You hungry? Cool. Next, we're going to take a look at a horror mystery thriller called Night Watch, Demons Are Forever, and it's available on Shudder. <laughs> Martin's daughter, Emma, takes up a Night Watch job to find out what happened to her parents almost 30 years ago. A meeting with Warmer in his cell pulls the serial killer out of his coma and sets in motion a chain of faithful events. It is directed by Ole Borndahl. Okay, after watching the trailer for Nightwatch, this looks like a pretty decent foreign film. The premise seems interesting, and we get to see a lot of asylum shots where we see patients doing a ton of crazy things. It looks like we get a really good conflicted character in this one, and to add to that, we see a lot of morgue shots, which means we could get some really good creeps and scares out of this one. I'll be putting Nightwatch on my watch list. Next, we're going to take a look at a straight horror called Killer Body Count, and it's available on Tubi. Do you know how to use this? Uh, yeah, I saw it on Stranger Things. Oh. Mistaken for a sex addict by her devout father, Cammie is sent to an isolated rehab center. But when a killer begins to hunt the teens, Cammie realizes that her survival and her independence are intertwined in ways she could never imagine. It is directed by Danishka Estrezi. Okay, after watching the trailer for Body Count, this one looks like it could be a fun mystery slasher. The production looked decent and the acting looked competent enough. Now, I always love the clicky teen angle as it does remain a favorite of mine and it always provides a really good backdrop for a comedy horror. Now, I'm sure the movie's going to be raw just based on the subject matter. I mean, we really are at a teen sex rehab, and you get a ton of, like, kind of sex scenes and sexual innuendo that you even just see in the trailer. I only really saw the killer running around with a knife, so I do kind of worry about kill variety in this one, but hopefully the whodunit nature angle really holds it up. I'll be putting killer body count on my watch list. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery. How did you know what I did last Thursday? <laughs> Next, we're going to take a look at another straight horror called Pandemonium, and it's available on VOD Digital. Humanity, mauvaise par nature, it doit expire. After realizing he has died at the scene of a car crash, Nathan descends into the depths of hell 
where he's doomed to experience the pain of tortured souls along the way. It is directed by Quarks. Okay, after watching the trailer for Pandemonium, I've got to be honest, I'm kind of interested to see this one. Now, just for a warning, those who kind of like a faster-paced, high-octane scare movie, there is a blurb in the trailer that literally says existential art house fuckery. So you know you're going to be getting a lot of that weird angle. Again, think hereditary, think midsummer, think stop motion. Now, while that may scare some people off, for me, I always look at these movies as like almost an opportunity to take in something deep or just something weird or something that really sparks conversations between me and my girl or me and my friend. So I'm always kind of looking forward into these kind of weird ones. Now the subject matter in this film and the way that they're kind of handling and dealing with death, it makes me think that this might be one of those exact films. Now I'm just going to be real for a second. There is also a chance that a movie like this turns out to be trite, confusing garbage. It's just the risk that you sometimes got to take with these. Either way, I'm in for the risk and I'm going to be putting Pandemonium on my watch list. Accompagne les âmes avant qu'elles ne se fassent tourmenter pour l'éternité. Je serai votre accompagnant. Après la mort, il n'y a que l'enfer. Vous êtes complètement fou. La flatterie ne vous mènera nulle part. Next, we're going to take a look at a drama, fantasy, horror called Cinderella's Revenge, and it's available on VOD Digital. Cinderella is pushed too far by her evil stepsisters and stepmother, which causes her to switch out of her glass shoes and use the assistance of her fairy godmother to seek bloody vengeance. It is directed by Andy Edwards. Okay, after watching the trailer for Cinderella's Revenge, it looks like we could be in for a very Brothers Grimm-esque style fantasy horror. Now, when I first started watching this one, because of the budget and the acting, I wasn't really impressed. But as the trailer rolled on, it does look like we could get some brutality in this slasher. Now, even the mask she dons to exact Cinderella's revenge just looks cheesy and all that. But it did look like we got good kill variety and definitely some brutality. For some reason, I'm kind of intrigued. And while it's going to get a lower spot, it definitely is going to be one I'm going to try on the watch list. Those three are pure evil. I want them to suffer just as much as I have. This mask will give you the strength and power to kill those who wish you harm. Cinderella's revenge. How sweet it'll be. Lastly, we're going to take a look at one more straight horror called Tarot, and it's available on VOD Digital. Who's next? When a group of friends recklessly violates the sacred rule of tarot readings, they unknowingly unleash an unspeakable evil trapped within the cursed cards. One by one, they come face to face with fate and end up in a race against death. It is directed by Spencer Cohen and Anna Halberg. Okay, after watching the trailer for Tarot, I'm kind of sad that this one's getting butchered by the critics because I actually thought the trailer looked alright. Now I get it, this one looks like it's kind of on the nose and full of tropes, but I do like these horror movies where you get a group of people who meet their demise in a way that fate kind of saw. Now I also know what you guys are thinking, sure, this one looks very Final Destination-ish, but I still thought it looked like it was kind of fun and could have some good jump scares in it. Now I'm not looking forward to this one as much as I was, but I am going to watch it for myself and put it on the watch list. It's an unspoken rule not to use somebody else's cards. Who cares? Who's going first? Well, guys, that's going to do it for another episode of 10 Horror Movies to Watch and Stream. I hope you found some good movies for your watch list, and if you liked this content, please like and subscribe. Now, if I had to pick two movies, the first movie I would actually pick is Night Watch, Demons Are Forever. I don't know why, I just really thought that it looked creepy. I thought the story was intriguing. I liked kind of the morgue and mortuary scenes. Uh, it just looked like it had some good jump scares, and it's one that I'm kind of interested in checking out. And the other movie I'm looking forward to this week is Panda. Pandemonium. Now, I know for the people who don't really like those kind of slower drama horrors, uh, I really do. And so I just want to see what this, how this one turns out. I want to see if we get to see something really weird or deep. Uh, it just looks interesting to me. And it's the other movie that I'm looking forward to for sure. Well, I am out of here because as always, I have got a ton of horror movies to watch. I hope you guys take care of yourselves and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.